Hey guys, Brendan Productions here, and welcome to part 11 of my Java tutorial series. Now in this tutorial I'm actually going to be talking about a few things, uh, the first one being uh, programming organization, and the second being, uh, or the second is I'm just going to be creating an example program right now. Now, so if you are into mathematics, which uh, if you're a programmer you're most likely somewhat into it, um, then uh, you'll enjoy this website that I'm about to show you. It's actually a, uh, it's actually um, called Project Euler or a Euler. What am I talking about? Uh, Project Euler dot net. Uh, for those of you who are involved in higher level math, you know that Euler's number is actually a transcendental number, and it's equal to I think 2.8 or something like that. But anyway, uh, so they named this website after the guy that created a. Uh, the transcendental number and uh, what it is is it's actually just a list of huge problems that can only be solved mathematically uh, and are tedious unless you could create a computer program to do it so for this tutorial I'm going to be doing uh, this sample problem right here uh, so if we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5 then uh, so that are easily uh, evenly divisible by 3 or 5 then we get 3, 5, 6, and 9 uh, the sum of these multiples is 23. So now we will need to find the sum of all the multiples of 3 or 5 below 1000. So we can go ahead and get started right here. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually a uh, bracket organization. Now I really haven't done uh, organization type things in my past videos but the number one thing you really want to do when uh, creating things. Well, actually, you can create your own programming style. But the number one thing that I endorse is keeping your brackets lined up. This way you can easily keep track of uh, where your brackets are actually, or where your statements and bodies actually end. But um, And then once you want to start something new, you press tab, and then you can start the new bracket line. So for example, I'm going to start the public static with main here. And then you're going to enter down and then create brackets on this line right here. So they close and open on the same line. So we can easily tell where the main starts and ends. So now we can go ahead and get started with this project. So we're going to need um, a thousand numbers. So what we're going to do is obviously for this project we're going to be using a while loop. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I've created a tutorial on while loops. And yes, after a quick double check, I have created a, a tutorial on while loops. So what we want to do is actually create an integer that scrolls through 1 to 1,000 and finds all of the uh, numbers that are multiples of 3 and 5 uh, in that little category. So what we're going to do is int uh, i equal to 0, 0, and this is actually going to be our starting point. And then we're going to say while i is less than 1,000, actually less than or equal to 1000 we are going to do now this is also a uh, formation or formation formatting issue right here the while statement you can enter down and uh, set these curly brackets on the same column here so while i is less than 1000 then what we're going to do is uh, see if i is divisible evenly by 3 or by 5 so if i is divisible modulus by 3 and if it is evenly divisible, then this is going to equal 0. Then we know that i is a multiple of 3. Um, however, or not however, we're also going to do if... No, we aren't. So i is a multiple of 3. So when this happens, we, like, for example, if i is 15, um, it'll be divided by 3 equal to 5 with no remainder. So we know that 15 is a multiple of 3, so that'll be logged. However, if it is not a multiple of 3, oops, this should be on the next line. If it is not a multiple of 3, then we need to check if it is a multiple of 5. So if i modulus 5 is equal to 0, then... We know that i is a multiple of 5. Okay, so now that we've got this all set up, um, what we can actually do 
is create a. Uh, okay, uh, my bad. I gotta think this through. Now, the first thing we probably want to do is um, check to see how many multiples there are, so we can create an array that stores all of this information. So the first thing we're going to do is check how many there are. So we're going to make int count equal to zero. And uh, so if i is a multiple of three, then we're going to increase count by one. And uh, if i is a multiple multiple of three, if i is a multiple of five, then we're going to increase the count by one. So a uh, count is going to be increased by one each time there's a new multiple. And this should be five, not four. Um, so now we've got the actual count. So now what we need to do is create a new integer array that will store uh, every single number here. So we're going to integer array, int, and this will just be called array. And then we're going to insert the brackets to declare that it is array, equal to new array, no, nope, int. And then in these brackets right here, we're actually going to type how long the int needs to be. Well, it needs to be as long as uh, count, because that's how many there actually are. So now what we're going to do is int y equal to 0. And this y will actually keep track of the array slot we are currently in. So now that that's going to keep track of the array slot that we're currently in, we're going to start in uh, the zero slot. And every time we insert something into the array, we're actually going to increase this slot by one, which is a fantastic way of doing it, in my opinion, possibly. And we're actually going to exit out of this while statement when we do this here. So we can get a fresh block here. So we're going to say i equals zero again. And we're going to start over. So while i less than or equal to 1,000. And we're just going to paste the code that I uh, cut there. If you didn't notice, I cut that little those little two lines with a shortcut control X. And uh, so while i is less than 1,000, actually, we need to pop this up here, creating a new array. So we're saying if uh, i i divided by 3 has a remainder of 0, then what we need to do is uh, know that this is again is a multiple of 3. However, if it's not a multiple of 3, we still need to check if it's a multiple of 5, which we can do right here. So now i is a multiple a five. Now, this is just the exact code from up here, retyped. And uh, the only thing we need to worry about in this is um, we never actually increase the value of i here. So i would stay at zero, and this would get nothing done. But now i is zero, and then uh, we're going to divide i by three, and then i by five. And if those have remainders, or actually we need to make i equal one, so we're never dividing by zero, because that's illogical in math. And then we're increasing the value of one, or i by one at the end here. And then we're saying i is 1 again. And uh, here we go. So we're going to increase i by 1 again. Now, if you're not following any of this logic, uh, I know it's kind of hard to understand with me simply rambling while I do this. However, um, most of the thing, in fact, I think that all of the things that I'm actually using here were taught in previous tutorials. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, then uh, go ahead and check out those previous tutorials. So since i is a multiple of 3, we're actually going to say that uh, array y is equal to i. So we're making the 0th slot in the array equal to i. And then we're going to uh, actually increase the value of y by 1 because we just fill the slot. And uh, however, if it is a multiple of 5, we're going to say array y is equal to i, and then we're going to increase the value of y once again. Whew. 
Okay, so now that should work out fine. So we're basically scrolling through here, and we're saying i is 1, creating a new inter, uh, integer array with the count filled with uh, the amount of their, the amount of, you know, things there are. And then uh, this is keeping track of the slot. So let's just say we're doing i is 5. So i is 5, it goes down here. I divided by 5 has a remainder of 0, so that means we're filling the first slot with 5, then we're increasing it to go to the second slot, and then we're increasing this to go to 6, and it's going to reloop the whole thing. So that's good. And now what we need to do is actually add all the numbers together. So we're going to uh, say i equals 0 over here, because i is kind of our running count number. And then what we need to do is say while i is less than or equal to and we're going to do array.length. Now, array.length is actually just the amount of sp slots that are actually in the array. So that'll work out good. And we've got an error here. Length. Length. Okay. Uh, apparently, you don't put those end parentheses on there. It's just array.length. So while i is less than array.length, we're going to add up all the slots. So right here we actually need to create a new integer called total and we're going to make it equal to zero and uh, we're just going to say total equals total plus um, array and then the slot we are currently in. And then finally we are going to out.print line the total. So let's go ahead and test this puppy out. So we're going to press uh, run here. And it should just give us one number once we're done. Just output one number. However, there is definitely a high. Oh, we never increased the value of one after we added the total, or the value of i after we added the total. Therefore, it was constantly doing it. So now it should work. Oh, and there we go. We got an error. This is good. Array index out of bounds exception. Okay, how about uh, what if we try changing this to count? Same thing. Uh, what if we just change this to less than? Ah, uh, here we are. So it looks like the answer to this problem is the sum of all of the uh, multiples of 3 and 5 between 0 and 100,000 is 234 or 1,000 is 234,168. So we have no idea if this is correct until we pop up uh, Project Euler and actually put in our answer. We're going to type in the confirmation code 06048, press check, and it's going to tell us that our answer uh, is in fact incorrect. Which uh, definitely is a problem here. We can go ahead and check our logic. Um, you know, I think the main thing that's messing up uh, this whole thing is this array here. So what I'm going to actually do is cut out this array. And uh, we're actually just going to create the... Oops. We're actually going to create the total variable right here, cut out the array, cut out the slot, and we're just going to say total equals total plus, and then this number. Cut out this, uh, total equals total plus the multiple. Cut out this again. Cut out this while statement. We're not resetting i, we're instead we are instead system.out.printing total. Okay, so with this, we should get a totally different answer. Let's uh, run it here. 200,000. Okay. That might have been the same answer. I don't remember. Is it the same answer? Let's uh, go ahead and check. So we're going to copy this answer, paste it in here. 92313. Check. Okay, it must have been the same answer. Hmm. So, you know, um... 
Okay, well now we know it's below 1,000. So now what we need to do is cut out this equal sign because it's below 1,000, so we're not actually getting the multiple of 1,000. And then we're going to... I don't even know why I did that. Okay, so now we're going to uh, run this one more time. And we definitely get a different answer this time. So we're going to go ahead and pop this in. 85418. Check that. And hooray! We got problem one correct. We are officially the 176,623rd person to solve this problem. So I officially feel unique. Not really. Okay, so uh, overall this was just a basic example of yet another Java program. And this was actually just talking about formatting of curly brackets uh, and how you should probably always keep them in the same line in order to keep things organized. Of course, this was also showing off Project Euler dot net, I think it is, yes, Project Euler dot net, and uh, this little sample application that you construct with if statements and while statements. Now, some of my viewers might get bored of this since I'm not actually doing any tutorials. However, strict tutorials are coming soon. And the reason that I've done simply just a bunch of example problems is because when I was learning Visual Basic.net, the number one way that I actually learned how to do this was through example problems that I watched other people do. However, you can go ahead and uh, go to ProjectEuler.net and uh, check out more problems, and maybe you guys could uh, get these things correct, these little problems here. Um, Go ahead and go on to bbforums.info and you can actually discuss some of these problems or unique problems that you're trying to solve yourself. And uh, Thanks for watching this tutorial, guys. I'm sorry if I sounded a little bit monotone in this tutorial, which I'm sure I did. Uh, people have actually been telling me that I sound monotone. Why am I, keep, why am I still talking? I don't even know. Uh, remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, have a great day. And let me try to find my recorder again, like always. Where are you? There you are. All right. Goodbye, guys.